Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at a Fluke 8842A 5.5 digit precision bench multimeter. These were manufactured in the early 1990s by Fluke and this particular model was one of a range of meters that they produced at that time in their 8840 series. This particular model was the top of that range and an impressive accuracy on the DC range of up to plus or minus 0.003%. So what we're going to do today is have a look at this meter briefly and then take it apart and see exactly what's inside and how they achieve this accuracy. So let's get started. To switch the meter on we simply press the, the green button. When you first switch the meter on you'll notice that the whole of the vacuum fluorescent display, all the segments light up. Uh, that's one way of, of checking the display. Uh, after a few seconds it reverts to normal mode. If on the other hand you wanted to hold that display so you can uh, check for longer you simply press the SRQ button here while the display is fully lit. I'll just demonstrate both, both options. Switch on the display lit for a few seconds and then goes to normal mode. I'll switch off. If I switch on this time but then press the SRQ button there, it'll hold, it'll freeze that display. So it will now hold that display so we can see all of the segments lit. And uh, to cancel that you simply press the SRQ button a second time. But what you can see here is all the indicators on the display. So on the right hand side you've got the milliamps, the DC, AC, indicator, the uh, meg, k and ohm indicator and the 4 wire indicator there. Uh, on this side we have all the functions relating to the IEEE 488 interface at the back and along the top there you have some of the functions of the meter relating to the reading rate. You've got SMF which is slow, medium and fast. Over range you've got there error if you have an error message. If you're in calibration you've got the cal symbol coming up. If you're using the auto range you have auto and if you want to have an offset onto your reading you can do that as well and you have the offset indicator coming on. So to cancel the freeze of the display I simply now press the SRQ button a second time and the meter reverts to normal use. You just go through a test cycle until it settles down. Uh, if for any reason there was a fault with the meter uh, it will come up with an error code there rather than complete and go into as it's done here the uh, DC voltage range. The white buttons here across the top are simply uh, DC volts, AC volts, 2 wire ohms, 4 wire ohms, milliamps and milliamps AC. The grey button there at the end, the auto, you can switch the meter into auto arranging, in which case you'll see the auto indicator lit on the display. Pressing the auto button switches the meter into manual arranging, and you'll see the grey buttons here across the bottom allow you to select whichever manual range you wish. And you'll notice there the decimal point is moving down the display. The button here under the input uh, terminals here is simply for switching the input from the front connections to the rear connections of the meter. And these buttons, these group of buttons here, uh, you have trigger, external trigger, they're to do with the IEEE 488 interface when you're triggering the meter externally, uh, although it does have internal trigger. And uh, the rate button there selects the rate at which the meter is making a reading. If you look at the moment it's showing an S is flashing which means it's on the slow rate. If I were to press the rate button once it's gone to M medium rate reading. I press it again it goes to F fast reading. Press it another time and it goes back to slow. Under normal conditions the rate at which it reads the uh, uh, voltage or the current or the ohms is automatic if you have it in the auto range.
The other buttons you have at the bottom here, you have the offset button there, so you can you can program in an offset. For example, if you wanted to cancel out the resistance of the uh, leads, you can do that and then press in the offset, and then it will subtract that from the uh, final reading on the display. If or if you wanted to set a preset a starting reading, you can do that also by using the the offset button. The local button, when you press that it will show you for a few seconds the address for the IEEE 488 interface bus. I'll just do that. It shows me it's on 06 so we know the channel that the bus is on so you can set it to the correct channel. The button there in the right hand corner, the SRQ button generates a service request over the IEEE 488 bus if enabled. Uh, it also has the uh, function of initiating a diagnostic self-test on the meter. Right, I'll now just check the quickly check the accuracy of the meter. I'll connect it to a, a 10 volt reference source which is accurate and just uh, see what the meter displays. So the meeting is reading uh, 10.001 per volt. I do know that this particular meter has been calibrated so it should be uh, within specification. Here we see the rear uh, of the meter just very quickly. The mains input uh, socket there, the mains input fuse, the voltage selector switches you can see there. There is the IEEE 488 interface bus connector and behind this opening here you'll see some DIL switches which are used to set the address for that bus. These are the four terminals at the rear of the meter that you can switch for input, uh, rear input and uh, this side we have two uh, BNC connectors for uh, a trigger, external trigger in and out. Another point worth mentioning is that the uh, trigger connectors here are only fitted if you have the IEEE 488 interface module fitted in this unit. If that module wasn't fitted, these would be these holes would be blanked out. Just a couple of other points on the front of the meter. There you have a slot at the edge of the display where you can access the calibration switch. It's a push button switch. You can uh, select internal calibration. All calibration for this meter is done without having the need to take the case off. And the other thing at this side you have the uh, socket there for the current ranges. This particular socket is actually fused at 2 amps. To access the fuse you simply put something in the slots there and twist that. That then comes out of the meter and you have a 2 amp fuse at the end. You can just pull that fuse out and then if you need to replace the fuse. Okay, what we'll do now is we'll uh, take the casing off and have a look inside the meter. So to take the case off, the first thing we need to do is uh, remove the uh, the back shield here. Two screws, one on either side. And then there is another screw at the back here which tends to clamp down this plastic shroud at the, the back here. So I'll just slack that off so I can remove the... well I'll take it out actually. Just a small screw. And the, the back shroud thing comes off together with its rubber feet. And then hopefully the, the casing should now slide off.
lovely look around the meter. And the underside, you can actually see there the, uh, the plastic mechanism there that operates the, the on off switch at the back. Let's turn around and have a look inside the unit. Okay, I'll uh, just zoom in a little closer so we can have a, a better view. As you can see, this particular meter is fitted with two additional printed circuit boards. Uh, one here and the other one there. Uh, this one is option 9, which is a true RMS option, which is being fitted on this particular meter. And the board at the back here is option 5, and that is the i E488 bus interface. So what I'll do for the moment is I'll just try and remove these two uh, boards and see whether we can see the main printed circuit board underneath more clearly. To do that you notice we have some black tabs at the corners there so basically what you do is you just pull these up a bit tight and it releases the, the clip. As I lift the board, there is a ribbon cable you can see just here, so we need to just release that ribbon cable. And then there's another connector just on there, which I've just removed, this one from here. And there you can see the uh, true RMS module. We'll have a close look at that later, but for the time being I'll just put that to one side. Just remove the the I E488 board at the back, and to do that, in addition to releasing these two clips, I also have to take two screws out of the connector at the back. I'll just show you that. There's, I need to take these two nuts off there. Releases the board. So I should now, by lifting this one here, a bit tight that one. And I should now be able to remove the the board. It's a little bit tight this one at the back because of the connectors going through the, the back panel here. And there we have the uh, there we have the interface board, the I E four double eight interface bus. I'll, I'll, again I'll put that to one side and we'll maybe have a look at that uh, later. Right, now we have a, a clear view of what's in the meter. I must say it's very, very well laid out and uh, the screen printing on this is excellent. Uh, you'll know one thing I've noticed first of all, there's no presets. <laughs> At least I can't see any presets. And uh, like all Fluke instruments, they tend to use custom components. I've noticed first of all that uh, there's a lot of thin film resistor networks, there, 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 all over the place, over here, over there, and they're all with Fluke power numbers and uh, obviously they're specific to Fluke. They're particularly of interest because they're on a, a sort of ceramic, white ceramic plate and then the uh, thin film resistor network is based on, of, on that and uh, what they appear to have, it's covered with a some sort of a quartz, a clear quartz uh, is shielding uh, the uh, resistor networks 
uh, a little bit later I'll bring the camera down and we can have a close look at how they do that. Okay, let's um, let's move around the board and see what we can spot. Obviously, the obvious thing really is the the main power supply and main input circuitry down here. Uh, what is particularly nice about this one is that the mains transformer here is all bonded in some sort of a rubber coating. So this is all bonded in a rubber coating which seals the whole transformer. Um, down the side of the transformer you can see the main diodes that are used as uh, to make up the bridge rectifier network and here you can see the main smoothing capacitors. The largest one there is uh, 6800 microfarad and the others that's uh, 330 microfarad and these two here are 470. Also looking around this area you can see there's a number of voltage regulator ICs. There's one there, there, two here and another one here on a, a heat sink. The one on the uh, the heat sink is a 5 volt, a positive 5 volt regulator and the two here, but what I'll do, I'll just zoom in so you can see that a little bit more clearly. Right, there we have a uh, a much clearer view of uh, the power supply network there. Um, okay, the, these other regulator ICs here, you have one there which, uh, looking at that, that's a negative, that's a, a minus 24 volt regulator IC. Uh, the interesting thing here is that the power supplies, uh, they need to generate a 30 volt negative and, and positive supplies and how they achieve that is that they use a 6.2 volt Zener in the earth leg of this 24 volt regulator to uh, achieve the 30 volts uh, supply. Uh, this one here, this IC here is a 15 volt, uh, negative 15 volt regulator IC and then next to the 5 volt regulator here which is on that heat sink I mentioned you have two of the regulators. The one at the far side there is a, another uh, 15 volt but this time it's a positive 15 volt regulator and there we have a positive 24 volt regulator IC and again there's a 6.2 volt Zener in its earth return of that uh, to give 30 volts uh, regulated supply. Um, the only other thing really of interest around here is just down there right up against the main transformer is a small thyristor uh, SCR and that's been used as a crowbar on the uh, uh, plus and minus 15 volt uh, regular supplies right at the uh, uh, the rectifier input to the, those uh, regulators. Um, for some reason I think they're using that to uh, switch off that supply in the event of uh, any issues. So that's an interesting point there is the uh, SCR uses a crowbar. On the uh, behind the transformer here where we've got the mains input circuitry here with the mains fuse tucked away down there uh, under this shield in here we have some uh, ferrite rings two ferrite rings uh, with uh, a number of turns around it to filter out uh, interference on the mains input side and just right down there by the mains input connector there you may not be able to see it but there's a a large varistor again for some uh, spike uh, protection on the mains input uh, supply. I'll uh, just zoom back out from the board and then just see if we can have a, an overview of where the, the particular components are and then if I spot something of interest then I'll zoom back in again. Looking at this area of the board here, you can see you've got the main computing power, I should suggest, of the board. They're using a micro processor chip there, which is a, a Z8 uh, processor chip. And the other large chip at the side of it there is a uh, some kind of a programmable interface adapter to supply the uh, front keypad assembly and the uh, display, the front display. Um, these two chips here 
are uh, well this one here first of all is a uh, electric a bit alterable memory chip and the one next to it looks like a ROM which has got obviously been programmed for the software for the meter uh, here we have another large logic processing chip I'm not quite sure exactly what that is but we'll have a closer look at that later uh, but you can see some of the thin film resistor networks here again they're all specific to Fluke they're all branded Fluke and uh, in fact it's in this area where we've got the uh, reference voltage supply being generated so I'll, I'll zoom into that uh, a little bit later once I've gone around the other parts of the, the board uh, in this area of the board here we have a number of ICs and they're all to do with the display they're uh, drivers for the seven segment display uh, there's the there's one two three chips there which are drivers for the seven segment display and uh, they're working in conjunction with the large uh, adapter IC there which is the programmable one which I mentioned earlier there you can see we have the uh, crystal, 8 MHz crystal for the main processor IC uh, and as we come down this part of the board with the input circuitry uh, you have a couple of relays there uh, this one here is a, a sort of conventional flat relay whereas the, the one there, the red one which is encapsulated is a 5 volt read relay I think they use that for the high voltage switching uh, also you have some protection in this part of the board as well which again I'll zoom into and we can have a closer look at that okay so what I'll do now is I'll, I'll zoom into some of these sections of the board and just see if we can identify some other interesting components okay here's a, a closer view of the uh, the voltage reference part of the the board um, uh, it's in this area here and uh, the one of interest is just down there you might just be able to see it we have a a linear technology IC which is in fact the voltage reference IC <laughs> this particular one is manufactured specifically by linear technologies for fluke so it's not available as a, as a normal component from linear technology it's only made for fluke and this is labeled LT FLU and the interesting thing here is that this particular reference IC is exactly the same one that fluke use in their 732B DC standard um, equipment so it's a very very good quality one and uh, the fact that it's uh, in line with the uh, voltage DC reference standard equipment that they um, manufacture which are very expensive to put it in a meter of, of this type um, some people may say it's overkill but uh, it's a very nice uh, uh, reference source there around that you have uh, a number of uh, operational amplifiers you have one there, one there and one over here and uh, they, they tend to be uh, LF411 uh, or LF412 so low noise and low drift operational amplifiers that are used in this circuit basically what they're doing in here is that they're generating a 7 volt reference from this, uh, this IC and then uh, they're creating from that a negative 7 volt reference as well so they have a plus and a minus 7 volt reference and you can see that we have the test pins here and here for the 7 volt reference source this one here is the negative one and this one over here which you just might be able to see is the positive uh, test pin for the uh, positive 7 volt reference there again you can see these uh, thin film resistor networks which are specifically made for fluke and very little else here apart from this large log logic IC we have here again that's a, a fluke part number on that what they've also done in this area is that they've put some shield in here they've got some metal shielding shielding the 
reference supply circuitry here from the microprocessor and the switching logic at this side of the, the board. Right, here is the, a closer view of the input circuitry to the, to the meter. They can see the long white switch there which is simply used for switching from the input uh, terminals to the rear terminals. Uh, next to that you have uh, a large fuse which is obviously used on the, the current ranges. Uh, next to that you have a uh, current uh, shunt resistor which you can't see very clearly at the moment but I'll try and give you a better view of that later. And uh, then in this area here we have uh, this what looks like an IC is actually a, a dual uh, JFET uh, transistor with a red dot on top and here we have uh, analog devices uh, operational amplifier which is a low noise one low drift uh, it's an FET type of op amp it's the uh, AD645 and in fact you have another AD645 here the only difference is that this one is using a metal uh, the TO99 casing whereas the one over here is using a standard 8 pin dill uh, casing. There you can see the uh, thin film resistor networks and there you've got the, the two switching relays which you certainly hear clicking away when you've got the meter on. It's an auto arranging meter. Uh, down in this area here you see these red components. You've got one, two, three, five of them. They're all uh, varistors and they're used for input protection. Also for input protection you have these two resistors here, there and there. They're, they are 1K resistors but they are uh, fusible resistors they're, and they're um, what they call flame proof fusible resistors. So it's obviously giving some high degree of protection on the input circuitry there. And there you have uh, uh, a group of other transistors and are used in switching in the input circuitry there. OK, I think what we might do now is if I can get a better camera angle in this area, we'll, we'll have a look at some of these thin film resistors because they are quite interesting to, to have a look at. And just before I do that, on the input connectors here you can see we've got a ferrite core where uh, it's giving some uh, interference rejection there with that. OK, so let's uh, try and get a better angle and look at these uh, thin film resistor networks. OK, there you can see one of the thin film resistor networks there and you can actually just about see the uh, intricacy of the, uh, the circuitry on that. It's uh, on a substrate of, uh, of white ceramic and then it's coated with some quartz like glass type. Uh, it's sealed it from the environment so that's all sealed but obviously with it being clear they can actually laser trim those resistor networks in that module and by uh, burning off some of the uh, uh, print underneath with a laser they can increase some of the resistor values by taking off some of the shorting uh, links on that. I'll just move the camera across slightly and we'll just have a look at the next to the fuse you've got a uh, a current shunt uh, which is hand, appears to be hand wound. There you can see next to the fuse a current shunt there, I'll just move that wire slightly. Uh, it's just wound on some uh, some sort of plastic or something. Anyway there's a it's a hand wound wire shunt there which is just there next to the fuse. Heavy gauge wire. I've just uh, tilted the, the meter up slightly so we can see something of interest here. There's a a slider switch here which is used when you calibrate the uh, the meter. Uh, the, the actual mechanism that uh, 
triggers that you'll see that we've got this green plastic uh, lever there and that goes all the way through to the uh, the front panel and there's a slot in, in the display at the front where you can poke through and press that and then it will press that switch in for calibration There you have the uh, the ribbon cables there going to the uh, keyboard and the display of the front. Right, well I've got the, the board in this position, I'll just point out the test pins for the power supply. You can just see a group up here where you can check the, the 5 volt, the uh, 24 and 30 volt can all be checked there. The, negative supplies and the plus 5 volt supply and then down here we've got two more test pins there one for the plus 30 volt supply and one for the plus 15 volt supply and if I move this up slightly you can see we've got the other pins here for the plus 5 volts and the minus 15 volt supply and the ground pin is there as well. Right, we'll just have a, a quick look at the uh, the RMS uh, True RMS module, which is the option nine, which is fitted on this particular meter. Um, the main component on this board is that chip there, which is an analog devices chip. It's the AD six three seven KD, and that is a wideband. Uh, RMS to DC converter, um, quite commonly used in these applications. You see it all over the place in, in test meters these days. Um, and then apart from that, you've got a couple of other ICs here. There's a, a logic IC here, and you have a couple of what appear to be operational amplifiers, low noise, uh, high speed, uh, FET type. That one there is a linear technology one, the LT1056. And there we have a uh, National Semiconductor one, I think it's the LF351. And then this is obviously where all the high voltages are covered. That's just for protection really. And then on the other side of it there you have uh, another read relay there, switching relay. I might just remove that cover and just have a quick look see what's underneath there. And to, to do that I think there's a screw underneath, so I think it must be this screw here that's uh, you just removed to remove the cover. underneath there. You have a uh, another thin film resistor network there, uh, several ICs and uh, this looks like another relay, uh, read relay. Right, they, these chips here, just looking closely at these ICs, uh, these two, the larger ones, they're uh, DG211 and in fact what they are, they're, um, I've seen these before, these chips in Keithley meters, they're quad CMOS analog switches in these two chips, so they're just using switching. And then you have a couple of ICs here which are the same, that, that one there and that one there, and they're NE5532 and they're dual op amps, uh, like low noise, high precision op op operational amplifiers and uh, as I mentioned earlier this one is another operational amplifier the LF356. Okay so there we have the uh, the true the RMS to DC converter board. Right we'll just have a quick look at the uh, the I treble E 4 board, 
uh, and just have a, a quick look what's on there. Right here we have a, a closer look at the um, I treble E four double eight uh, option option five. Uh, just pick out the main components there. Uh, that's the main chip there on the board, the large one there in the in the middle there, National Instruments, and that's the uh, the main sort of send receive uh, controller for the uh, the uh, GPIB. Uh, this chip here is obviously programmed with a certain version of software for this uh, this board. Here at the back we have a 5 volt regulator IC on a heatsink together with its uh, smoothing capacitor 4700 microfarad. There's the crystal associated with the uh, controller IC which is uh, 8 megahertz crystal. Uh, there's the output uh, connector here we have some BNC outputs for the trigger output and these uh, DIL switches here to set the address for the uh, the interface and behind that you have what appears to be an IC, in fact that is a uh, dual inline resistor network uh, a group of 3.3k resistors and then you have a few other logic, uh, sorry no that's the um, a comparator uh, operational amplifier there and some logic circuit here and some logic circuit over here and, and also some logic ICs in this corner here and then you have some of the power supply test pins on this side so that's basically it, that's the uh, the, the option 5, the uh, IEEE 488 interface well I hope you found that to tear down of this Fluke 8842A multimeter of interest and I'll see you all again next time. Bye for now.